Oh, there you are. Hi, this is James Kendrick with J.K. on the Run Audio Edition, which I guess is about time to start calling this J.K. on the Run Video Edition, don't you think? It's pretty much all we do anymore. I've got a great show. This is show number 28 already. Got a great show for you today because there is a new device in the house. Oh, yes, there is. And it's right here. Excuse me just a moment. This is the, you can see the camera, can't you? Oh, and there's my, my co-host. This is Oreo. Say hi to the camera, Oreo. I don't know if you can see him, he's off camera. Anyway, this is the Fujitsu P1610 Mini Tablet PC. The first, in my opinion, Mini Tablet PC with a touch screen that offers the true tablet PC experience and hopefully on the video today I'll show you why I feel that way and why I'm so excited about this device. Let's wake it up. Touch screen, you see. Total manipulation with a touch screen. The 1610 has innovative features. There is a screen rotation button which I'm going to show you right now. We go from portrait to landscape to back to portrait instantly. Whoops. Yeah, right side up. It always helps, doesn't it? It's a great device. 8.9 inch screen. This particular unit has a 1.2 gigahertz core solo processor, one gig of, re of main system memory. It's got Intel integrated graphics that will share up to 128 megabytes of, of the system RAM for video memory. And I'm finding that the video performance is quite nice. But here's what separates this besides being a touch screen with a great tablet experience. Notice how it auto-rotated, just like any other convertible tablet PC. Now it's an undersized keyboard, and I'll show you uh, what that means as far as usage in just a moment. But it's actually pretty handy to have around. It's a full QWERTY keyboard. It's undersized, obviously, but it's got great function key controls, and the screen gives you the ability to swivel it in either direction. Pretty cool. And when you auto swivel it around, I'm going to show you what happens. Just like any other tablet PC, it auto rotates the screen. And it's an instantaneous rotation too, you'll see. So, tell you what, let's get up close and personal. So I will be right back in just a flash. Maybe not. Maybe we'll just stay here. We'll be right back. Maybe we won't be right back. Maybe we're just going to stay here. We're stuck in limbo. No, seriously, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Hope you get a good view of this. I love using this device in slate mode. It's you're probably aware I do most of my daily tablet work in slate mode. I attend a lot of meetings and take notes all day long. So the first feature that I'm going to show you is probably what sets this device apart from any other and makes for a really incredible experience. Now, notice the screen. There's, I should tell you one thing. Look, we just had the screensaver come on. Touch screen. Touch it. Comes back. That's cool. Try that with your active digitizer. Okay, um, first thing you should know about this screen, it's 8.9 inches big, which I find to be a perfect good size for really working around. And i tell you what, if you'll excuse me, I'm just going to move this up a little bit. There you go, so you can see it. What sets it apart? 8.9 inch screen, but it's running at 1280 by 768 resolution. That is awesome to be able to see so much information on the screen. But for me personally, where it makes a big difference 
is in taking notes, as I do with ink all day. You see, this is uh, just a typical one-note page. I'm going to start here, and we're going to. I'm going to show you what it's like. This is. Let's zoom that in. Yeah, that's what we need to do. I want you to be able to see this. Don't worry, I'm going to move it back over the screen. Sorry, you see what it's like when you have to do your entire video production yourself because you ticked off your whole production crew. In case you saw my last video, you'll understand why I have to do everything myself now. Now, wait a minute. Hang on just a second. So, as you can see, important lesson, never tick off your whole video crew. Yeah, it's really pretty bad when you do that. Now, let's see if I can get this where you can see it. So, OneNote is excellent experience. The Fujitsu has incorporated some palm rejection technology, which prevents vectoring when you ink on the screen. This is a test note. Now, I'm writing this very fast, and I'm holding it at an awkward angle, so my handwriting is pretty bad. Otherwise, as you all know, my inking is beautiful as a rule. But you see, I'm resting my hand on the screen. I see there is no vectoring. Now, the screen also has, if you can tell, I'm going to turn it where you can see it, a very glossy cover. And this is very reminiscent to me of the Gateway M280 tablet PC because it's very shiny, but it's also very smooth. This thing is, I feel no different inking on this device than on any tablet PC I've ever used. And that's a big testament to the technology that Fujitsu has put in here. There is no vectoring. So what this means is you get a true tablet PC, but you get the awesome advantage of having a touch screen. So you can do things like, oh, I guess I should have, hang on. Let's erase that vector. That was, I put that in there because I was in pen mode when I should have been in text mode, which is where I wanted to be. So you have a true touch screen experience what well, didn't do that? There we go. See how I selected text there using the pen? I could also do that with my finger. See, whoop, I moved it. So you get the advantages of a touch screen with the full benefits of the tablet PC. The only thing you're missing because it's a touch screen is the hover mode. And quite frankly, I personally don't miss it at all because I can do everything. For example, if I want to invoke the tip here and let's say I'll do something just to get it in there. There it is. And then if I said, you know what, let's select that. You still have the full tip, but in the event that you wanted to uh, make a correction using the hover mode, you can do that here too. You just tap on the down arrow as you would. That's kind of hard to see here. But this is a full tablet PC. And I love this device for that reason. Perfect size for me. I'm getting about three hours battery life, which is awesome. And it's just, in general, a very nice experience. It's just like a tablet PC. And like I said, you have the you have the screen rotation that you can do manually. But like any other convertible tablet PC, I'm going to show you. You have the keyboard, and we're going to look at this keyboard in just a minute. Let's swivel this around. See, we're already in landscape mode. It's that fast when you swivel. So let's move this over a little bit. It's undersized keys, but you can type on it. This is the Fujitsu P1610 tablet PC. 
So there you have it. You've got your track stick here. I hate them. I've made no secret about that. You've got three mouse buttons right here, which I find them a little bit too recessed. They're hard for me to hit sometimes, so I usually use a Bluetooth mouse with it when I use it. Let's uh, skip down here a little bit. I want to get where you can see the actual screen, and I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I think I'm going to zoom in. Bear with me. I just want you to be able to see how the keys work. You've got function buttons here. I'm not going to go over the every little specific hardware detail because I think Rob Bushway did a very good job with his ink show on Gotta Be Mobile on the 1610. So I'm just going to show you briefly. Uh, you've got your function buttons here. This is pressing the FN button twice makes the Fujitsu menu crop up here and you can interact with it for example here's brightness control now I'm on battery power so my brightness control is lower than it could be I'm gonna crank it all the way up so you can see how beautiful the screen is isn't that beautiful we'll just leave the brightness on because we get three hours of battery and I'm sitting at 71 percent so we should be good for the whole video so what else can I show you um, a lot of things that I do with uh, uh, OneNote, for example, look at the 1280 by 768 resolution. Look how much information that I'm able to see. It's pretty impressive, actually. It looks pretty good to me. I really enjoy working with the screen. And of course, remember, you've got your user enhancements with Outlook, you want to pop open your to-do bar, you can do so. If you want to get maximum screen resolution, of course, you can collapse your navigation bar, and now it's just one big screen, right? All kinds of stuff that you can do. Now, a lot of things that I do here is obviously inking emails and such like that. Let's spin this around. This is unique here. I should show you this. It's a dual hinge thing, uh, if you can see that. Depending on which orientation, this fits in the slot on the keyboard. So when you're, you go to slate mode and notice that it, it uh, popped back around all by itself, this is down. But when you want to close this as in laptop mode, as I'm going to do here, and I'm going to back out here so you can see this a little bit better. You pop that click down and you shut it like that. And I have it set for standby mode, so we should hear a beep shortly as it indicates it's gone to standby. Maybe we'll hear a beep. There you go. So this is how the device looks in standard laptop configuration. I like this. It protects the screen. Unlike a pure slate, you have the option to close it this way. You've got all the standard ports. Uh, I do want to show you something on the bottom because this is going to come into play in a little bit. Um, and I think Rob mentioned this too. Fujitsu has covered the areas where you normally hold it in slate mode with this nice felt. And it, it makes it really comfortable to hold and very secure because your fingers don't feel like they're going to slip at all. It's just uh, a really nice experience. What I'm finding is that Fujitsu has put every attention to detail for the usage of the machine. And that's just awesome. Uh, their build quality is excellent. I'm very impressed with this unit. Now one of the things I'm impressed with, and I'm going to show you this now, let's open it up and it should come back from standby. And I'm going to show you the fingerprint reader because I have it set to require log on because when I first log into the machine or when I resume from standby because I'm always at different offices and I want security. So you notice over here where my thumb is, there's a fingerprint reader. So I have it set. You see how easy that was. And boom we're back up and running. Resume from standby. It's really quick. I don't use hibernation on this device. 
I leave it in standby all the time. I really like it. You may also notice I'm using here the the Zoom desktop theme, the black and orange. I really like that theme a lot. It works pretty well for me. Now, what can you do with all of the screen real estate? Well, I'm going to show you. Funny you should ask. I'm going to show you. But first, let me position the camera a little bit better so you can see. Okay, that should be a little bit better. I'll show you what you can do with all the screen real estate. Let's go to, let's use our finger, because I usually use my finger when I'm interacting with the screen. You've got your web browsing. Now this is one thing that's really cool. Notice that I'm in landscape mode and I've got Internet Explorer up. The fingerprint reader can also be set as a navigation device. So what I can do here, if I can do this here, oh yeah, you've got to get this the window active, is I can scroll using the fingerprint reader. Now this is nothing new for a lot of tablet PCs and notebooks, but uh, it's new for mobile devices, I can tell you that for me. This is great. Now notice I'm going up and down in this orientation, and when I swivel it around into slate mode, I'm doing the same thing with my thumb here. It's really cool. I really like using this device. Every attention to detail for usability, uh, bar none. Now if you double tap this, see if I can do that. Maybe I can't. It's kind of hard to do actually. And I don't use the scroll mode like a middle mouse button. I don't use that very often, even with a mouse. But supposedly, oh well, can't get it, the scroll mode to come in. It does, trust me, because I've made it happen before. So this is Internet Explorer with the device. I'll back up a little bit again, just so you can see it. Indicators here, power. The battery indicator is interesting. It's right next to the hard drive indicator where my hand is, if you can see it. The battery indicator is interesting. It stays green down to 50%, then it changes to orange, and at some point I think it changes to red, although I've never let it get down that low, uh, so I can't tell you that for sure. But I think I read that in the manual. It goes to red. Anyway, it just gives you a very basic overview of how much battery charge you've got left. So the, the usability of this device is just awesome. I, I just can't state it enough. I've been using it for a few days in my work every day, all day, and it's working very, very well for me. And you may ask, what can I do with all that screen real estate? Well, let me show you Mind Manager. You know I love Mind Manager. Okay. Now this is in portrait mode, which is typically not very good for mind maps as a rule. So let's switch it over to landscape. Now you see how much information I'm getting in there? It's pretty cool. I wonder if this works. I haven't tried this. Oh, there's, I've got it in scroll mode. Oh yeah, there we go. Just scrolling with the uh, fingerprint sensor. I like doing that. I also have it configured to log me in for security like I showed earlier. But this is Mind Manager, so it's really awesome with a touchscreen device because I can actually manipulate this with my finger and concentrate on creating the content. That's what I love about inking on a tablet PC, and that's what I really love about the touch screen tablet PCs like the UMPCs and this Fujitsu. I can focus on creating the content. And I just find that very liberating, personally. Let's tell this to fit the map, and we're getting the entire map. This isn't a particularly large map, but I've got some big ones. And you can shrink it as small as you want, or zoom in as far as you want. So, working with ink is good. Let's select, oh, let's put it in pen mode. So Mind Manager is a great application for working with ink. And I will... See if I can get this to work. There we go. This 
is a test. And there you go. Created content with the pen. Great experience overall. Let's get out of here. Do we want to save changes? No. I probably got the uh, speakers set. Okay, I've got it on. Now, this has one speaker. It's actually under here. It's pretty much covered up. It's adequate for listening. In fact, well, I'll tell you what. Let me play something so you, you can hear for yourself. I mean, it's going to win no awards for audio quality. It's a single speaker, after all. And it's not very loud, as most laptops aren't really like this. So, but let me get iTunes running. iTunes is so slow. We know that. Now, I don't know if you can hear that. There we go. Now we got the raw album art. More than adequate for most anything you could want to do. Um, pretty cool. Of course, I've got my manager. See how easy it is for me to work with this? It's very light, about 2.2 pounds. So I can work in either landscape or portrait mode for note taking. Actually, for anything, but particularly in OneNote, I can do that. Having a touch screen makes it actually easier to move stuff around on the screen to manipulate the content. Again, it comes back to me for me rather it's all about creating the content and getting the work done an enabling mobile device and this one does that and then some I really love this device the uh, oh I did want to mention one thing the in fact I'm going to show you in the control panel Fujitsu has put this has a one single microphone but Fujitsu has put something called IntelliSonic uh, Control, if I can find it, Speech Enhancement Control. And this is software that's written by uh, Knowles Acoustics. I don't know if you can see that here. Knowles Acoustics. And what this software does is allow you to simulate a microphone array and get all of the noise reduction and background noise cancellation that you'd normally get, you see how you can toggle this around, see? I don't know if you can see that easily enough. Let me put that way up here. But it's letting you assume an array like a, for a conference room. You can narrow that to right and front. And what I found that through preliminary tests, I ran through the basic uh, speech recognition training for the tablet PC and let me tell you this thing worked great with just the one speaker and that technology so I'm gonna really do a lot of further testing with speech recognition since I'm such a big proponent of speech recognition uh, I'll, I'll keep you posted on that as that work progresses now there's some pretty cool stuff here let me show you some of the utilities. Um, I'm in the control panel now. Oh, I see. You can. That's where you enable your navigation using the fingerprint reader, etc. But let me show you some. Uh, oh, I should tell you one thing that I was really impressed with. There was only one piece of software that Fujitsu pre-installed on this device that I removed immediately and that was Google Desktop Search. Now, a lot of people like Google Desktop Search, so that's not really what you might call junkware. It's just that I don't like to using that. I use the Windows Desktop Search for Office 2007. Other than that, all the, all, all the software that was on here is a keeper. Um, this was configured with OneNote 2003, which of course I upgraded to Office 2007, so that went away. It came pre-installed with, let me just look here, business software is Adobe Reader 7.0, pretty standard stuff. 
you got uh, some links for Fujitsu service security panel application this has the trusted platform module and so there's a whole suite of software that are security minded uh, to lock you down which includes the uh, OmniPass software which controls the uh, fingerprint login um, let me see what else we have here oh yes there's an automatic Fujitsu driver update program which runs in the background if you choose to install it and we'll keep checking with the Fujitsu support website to tell you when there are updates available it'll download them in the background if you tell it to it make sure that you're always up to date now one thing that this also has is a hard disk shock sensor so if it detects a shock, now I have never run this, so this is interesting. If it detects a shock or a jolt to the machine, it retracts the hard disk read write heads, so it won't damage the drive. I don't know what this is. This is monitoring the shock. Now, the problem is, I don't know how to get out of here. I've never run this before. You're seeing something first time with me it doesn't let me out so it's actually moving with these buttons but I don't know what it's doing I guess I should read the manual shouldn't I which is a pretty good one by the way so let's see if the escape key did oh look what it's doing it's an accelerometer it's moving oh I see this is how you check to see if the detector is working fine. Well, that's pretty cool. But how do you get out of it? Tell me this. I know how you get out of it. Let's do the escape key. The old standard. See how handy it is to have a to have an escape key. I'll bet you that's it. That's it. Escape key takes it away. Cool. So you got to see something uh, all for your first time just right there with me as I'm looking to see what else is Fujitsu has installed uh, this has Bluetooth Wi-Fi of course the Bluetooth software is not installed nor the drivers so I, I don't agree with that because I think if you order Bluetooth in your configuration it should be installed and working I understand the, the thought process behind an OEM like Fujitsu saying so, well, maybe the user doesn't really want Bluetooth, so I'm not going to enable it by installing the drivers and software. But I, I don't like that. I, I think the out-of-box experience says if I if my device says it has Bluetooth, Bluetooth should be functioning when you when you fire it up. But that's really um, all there is as far as junkware that Fujitsu has installed. Now, I want to move on and show you a couple of cool things that you have not seen anywhere else so I'll be right back after these messages okay and we're back and yes this is what it looks like this is the Fujitsu port replicator for the P1610 and I have a webcam plugged into the back of it let me show you the device before I show you how the how the computer interacts with it this is a full kind of little docking station it uses the connector that is on the bottom of the 1610, which is this connector right here. As you can see, it snaps right in. It has a release button to get you out of there. Now, I think Fujitsu kind of missed a good opportunity here because on the back of this device, they don't have very many ports. They've got, as you can see, the two, two USB the VGA monitor out which is very useful and then an Ethernet which is I think it's a gigabit Ethernet if I'm not mistaken and of course a power jack I wish they had loaded this up Put, give me four USBs and firewire or something I mean, this basically is just duplicating some of the ports that is available on the back of the unit itself and not even all of them. This doesn't even have all the ports that this has. Now I know you still have all these ports 
that you can use. And by design, you can reach all of these ports, uh, with the exception of the VGA out, on the unit, which is in here somewhere. You know, I've never, to date, hooked this up. There it is. I've never hooked this up to an external monitor yet, but uh, according to Rob Bushway, he's driving, oh, uh, what was it, 1800 by 1400 resolution or something insane like that. But the unit itself, as you can see, front front of the unit, it, it fits right in here. It's got this little guide. You plug it in, and you'd see the light if I had left the uh, dock plugged in. So this is pretty much how I've been using it since I got this port replicator since as of about four hours ago <laughs> and you can use the device now this raises this up to a real nice level as you can see oh yeah we're gonna have to log in with our fingerprint reader again I love this fingerprint reader I've I've uh, enrolled all of my fingers so I can hit it swipe whatever I, I want to get in and it's pretty cool so this is the port replicator very simple and I don't think it's ever been seen before and you know one thing I've not tried before is using it in slate mode well you could do that might be a little uncomfortable but that's okay that's not what this is intended for let's face it but see this it's a full little convertible tablet PC laptop very convenient to have, but yet it adds no extra, no, really no extra weight, in my opinion. This thing weigh, weighs roughly the same, uh, the same weight as the Samsung Q1, and that has no keyboard at all. So, now the fact that this is undersized, I can't see myself using this for like long articles I might be writing or something because. It is pretty cramped. I can touch type with it, but it is pretty cramped, a little bit uncomfortable. So here's what I usually do. I still carry my Bluetooth Think Outside keyboard. I just pop it up and I use it. Now, if I think that this is going to be place the screen too far away, and I don't have trouble reading anything at this high resolution. I, I was afraid that was going to be a problem, but it is not. There's nothing too small for me to read. Here's what I do, for example, when I'm out in a coffee shop somewhere and I don't have the dock. Imagine the dock is not here. I just use the computer this way with my, with my keyboard. You see how that works? It's pretty slick. It turns it into a very nice, convenient stand, actually. And I can get it as far away or as close to the keyboard as I want. That's awesome. And I use my Think Outside Bluetooth mouse all the time. I love this mouse. See how it instantly works? And now I have full-size keyboard, perfect mouse, all wireless. I just carry this. I only take these out of the bag if I really need it. Otherwise, I just use, for short email and stuff, I just use the integrated keyboard on the Fujitsu itself and it's more than adequate for that. As you can tell so far I'm very happy with this computer. This is an awesome keyboard. Let me tell you. I mean uh, tablet PC. And I keep saying that because I can't stress enough this is a no compromise tablet PC. Other than the fact that this keyboard is undersized there are no compromises in my opinion. And like I said this is better than no keyboard if you really need one. Like you saw earlier, I needed the escape key to get out of that hard disk monitoring utility. I had one here without having to pop up the... Sure, I could have popped up the tip. And you can still do that. You know, everything you do here... In fact, this is big enough you can actually you can type, type that. Type on it with your fingers. And I do that all the time. I usually use my fingers, quite frankly. But, here we go, I should show you, I like this stylus, this is one of the few little plastic styli that I've ever seen that is comfortable to use. I use this all the time. It's got this spring-loaded nib, I don't know if you can see that, but it's, and I'm not sure what the purpose of that is. 
uh, unless it's maybe to help eject it. Maybe that's what ejects it from the, the stylus silo on the side of the unit here. But this is very comfortable. And one thing that I'm happy to see on the Fujitsu website, I've not ordered them yet, but they sell replacement packs of five of these styli for only $29. And I think that that is a great move uh, by Fujitsu because, yeah, it's just plastic, but it's spring-loaded. And you know how it is. You can leave one everywhere you are in case you ever lose one. You'll have, have it there. Now, I, one last thing that I want to show you before we have to call it quits that has not been seen, I don't believe, is the Fujitsu P1610 extended battery. Now, this just came in today. I'm getting about three hours of battery life on the standard battery here, which is pretty good for a three-cell battery. But let me show you. Oh, I did want to show you. I'm going to have to do something. And this this is something that I think Fujitsu missed the boat on a little bit. They claim that these batteries are hot swappable. They're not. What they mean is you can swap it while it's in standby mode if you have it plugged into your AC adapter or power, in other words. That's that's not hot swappable to me, Fujitsu. Hot swappable is when I should be able to uh, I should be able to put it in standby and swap the battery really quick, like I can on my HP TC1100. That's not the case here. I'm gonna have to shut down totally to, to swap the battery. So you see what a pain that is, Fujitsu. In case you're listening, please make these truly hot swappable. But I want to show you the battery. I want to show you how it connects. It's kind of hard to swap, to tell you the truth, but then I don't have a lot of practice with it yet because it just got here today. Shutting down windows so I can take it out of the dock and replace the battery right here. For the first time, you've, you will see a battery swap on a Fujitsu 1610 on a video review. So come on, windows. See, this is why I never shut down a machine. Windows XP shut down and restarts horrible, as we all know. Standby, however, even with the fingerprint reader for password protection, is a couple of seconds. This just pops out. See how it shot that out? Now, here's how this works. It's got two latches, and this is very difficult to do, I'm finding. Very difficult for me to do takes two hands, and I, I guess I just haven't practiced it enough. I'm afraid I'm going to drop the device. Maybe if I do it this way. Let's try it. They have to come in both at the same time, and then somehow you have to be able to... Maybe if you just do one side at a time. There we go. I got one side, and we're going to get the other side here in just a minute. And then this one went back in. Alright, that should get me out of here. Come on. Alright, let's try this. Then, maybe it needs to be easier from the top. Of course, there's always a way to do it. Now, here's the battery, as you can see. I'm going to plug it in here, which is easy to do. This battery is twice the power. So I'm anticipating getting between five and six hours out of just this battery alone. See how the indicator turned green? Because it said, hey, I got a fully charged battery. Now, this battery is actually easier to use it than I thought. It only adds, by my estimation, about half a pound, which is not too bad. It creates a better wrist rest for typing on this tiny keyboard because you've got this extra lift. You see, this is how it was before. You've only picked up this little extra lip right here. And uh, when you're in slate mode, it's actually even easier to carry. Because this is kind of like a little grip. And it's very grippy in the back. They made it where you can grip it. 
And so I'm going to try using this. Uh, I'm going to leave my Battery Geek battery at home for a few days and try. I'm going to start off with the standard battery for the light form. And if it ever runs down, gets low at the three hour mark, I will pop in this one and go up the rest of the day. Um, I suspect I can get ha at least half of my day on just this one. So that's pretty cool. So we are almost finished here. This also is pretty cool. Let's pop this back in the dock for a minute. As you can see, Fujitsu, with their attention to detail, the dock fits the extended battery perfectly. So no compromises there. And this is actually really easy to use as this becomes a full, a full grip. Now let's fire this up. I know it's painful to watch Windows XP. Watching Windows XP boot is like watching paint dry, isn't it? But I just want to fire it up and let you see it come back up with the battery. And we'll see what it estimates for the battery life because I really haven't looked to tell you the truth. So we can just agonize through this. And I'll tell you what, in fact, I'm going to have a nice cup of Joe which is now very cold by the way and here we boot so as you can tell I'm really loving this device it is the most complete tablet PC that I have ever owned that is so mobile and you know me I'm all about mobile this is mobile tech manner after all and I am really loving the form factor and the functionality that this provides me and the ability to do my work everywhere. The PC card slot, which I haven't really mentioned too much on the side here, I pop in my Verizon EVDO card and I am flying. In fact, I blogged yesterday from a coffee shop where I was getting over a megabyte per second download, upload speed or download speed, upload speed was about 300 if I thought it was like 200 kbps, which isn't too bad. So this actually isn't that long a boot process. You saw I swiped my my thing, I guess as long as nobody ever cuts off my thumbs and steals them, my, my data is secure. And speaking of secure data, one of the things that this OmniPass security software that interacts for passwords with the fingerprint reader, one of the things it lets you do is take what it calls the vault. You can have folders and files in the vault that are totally encrypted and can only be accessed through the fingerprint reader. So if you have sensitive corporate data, that would be actually a great way to protect that data so that if this was ever stolen, the data is useless to the thief. And I think that's a, that's, that's a pretty good thing for companies and individuals because I have a lot of client data on here and I'm, I'm, I'm feeling very secure having this all protected with this uh, Omnipass software suite and my fingerprint reader and everything. So we're still booting up of course as you can see down here it's still a booting or maybe you can't but I can. It's, it's relatively fast but yeah, it's Windows XP after all isn't it? But I did want to see when it boots up. The battery is probably close to fully charged. It may not be all the way, but I want to see what Windows thinks is the at the remaining battery life for it, or notebook hardware control maybe. I'll see what it thinks. Let me pull this up just a tad. There we go. So here we go. We're booting up. Come on, Mr. Windows. Please boot my computer. Here it comes. Here it comes. All right. It says I have 100%. And it's not going to tell me. Where is my little battery meter? Uh, it won't show me that because, of course, because I'm on AC power. So let's 
See that shock sensor utility? I, I jarred the computer when I was pushing it away and it parked the heads for a second. But it doesn't impact anything as far as usage I found. It just protects it, which is pretty cool. Now, where can I find this battery? Oh, it doesn't know because there's no history with this battery. Here we go. Now, it says four hours and 20 minutes. I think it's longer than that because, like I said, I'm getting three hours out of this one. This one has never been through a full cycle yet, not even once. So, I don't know how that impacts it. Now, it's going up. It's up to four hours and 46 minutes. So, we know how that goes with, uh, with Windows. So... This has been JK on the Run Audio Edition video version, show number 28, highlighting the Fujitsu P1610 tablet PC with the touch screen with palm rejection technology. As you can see how easy this is to use with the extended battery. It's actually much easier to hold, I have to tell you that. I'm surprised by that, but I should have known. Like I said, Fujitsu has put such attention to usability detail that it doesn't surprise me anymore. But this is really cool. It actually makes it fit easier in the hand because you've got something to grip on. So, Fujitsu P1610. Fujitsu, you have done a great job. Now, a question that a lot of people are asking me already is, is this my new next computer or tablet PC or mobile device? You know, I haven't really had it long enough, so I'm not ready to say yet. My... If I was a betting man, I'd probably say most likely. But I'm still happy with Flash, the Samsung Q1 SSD. So, but this thing is sure is nice with this nice big screen, isn't it? So this has been JK on the Run Audio Edition, show number 28. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll have a QVGA version up on the screen soon. We'll put that, post that up on YouTube in probably about a week or so. So thanks for listening, thanks for watching, thanks for visiting JK on the Run, Kevin Toffel and I really appreciate it. I am out of here. Bye everybody. Oops, I'm back again. Got a little special seg segment that I'm going to add to the end of this. Thought I'd give you viewers and readers a chance to see my Mobile Tech Manor. A lot of people ask for it. As we walk into Mobile Tech Manor, this is the business end. Let's let's look at the non-geeky side first. What we have, what I have over here is nice little typical wall. I have a chandelier. Not most people do. That's because this used to be a dining room until I captured it for Mobile Tech Manor. This is my <clears throat> seating area. There's the infamous book bag that I carry every day that a lot of people have read about, heard about. This is the Battery Geek portable power station. It's being charged right now. It's actually fully charged, but it's ready to go. And let's go look briefly over here. This is my library table. Whoops, sorry. Just got an old TV, typical TV up here with all the drawers properly closed, see? And here we go. This is just some cool stuff in my study. There's my JK on the run clock. This is my lovely bride Sherry and myself taken a few years ago as you can see. But here's the business end. Let's, let's have a look. What do we have here? This is pretty cool. This is a brochure that was sent to, be my, sent to me by Mike Kane in New York City. But what's so cool about this is that this is an actual size brochure of the Sony Reader. So this is an opportunity you can see if you want to get a perspective for size of what the Sony Reader is. If you haven't had a chance, as I, as I have not, to see one in perfect. Pretty clever idea of Sony, right? So anyway, we go back to our thing. There's my Sony U71, some creative speakers, 
CD burners, two of them, external hard drive. This is Flash, the Sony Q1, in the Q1 organizer with the USB keyboard. That's a nice keyboard and case. Works very well. Let's see if that's awake. Oh yeah, there we go. It's awake, it's awake. We have my external monitor, flat panel, which right now 19 inch, which right now is connected to the HP TC1100. That will probably not remain so for long. It may be attached to the Fujitsu dock. I've already shown you everything over there. That's my Canon scanner. I like that scanner a lot. There's my Canon i70 bubble jet printer, inkjet, battery operated. It's got a battery on the back. It'll print for, I don't know, a couple hundred pages on the charge. There's my XD6700 and my TomTom1 Tom navigator, GPS navigator system. And there's a bunch of boxes from geek stuff that's been delivered. And that's just the rest of my desk. That's the keyboard for the TC1100 in the inbox, <laughs> for lack of a better place to put it. And of course, I've already shown you my temporary Fujitsu desktop right there. So this has been James Kendrick, and this is Mobile Tech Manor. Thanks for watching JK on the Run Audio Edition show number 28. We'll be back really, really soon. Bye, everybody.